Last Man In episode 80? We're talking about how big of a deal this is now? 80, 80 episodes. episodes. That's this not is bad. a real commitment now. It is. Yeah. Now it's like, now it's not the issue of are we going to do the podcast? It's when. It usually yeah. obviously falls like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Usually once it starts hitting the Wednesday, we get real... Uh, one of us is really irritated that it's Wednesday. Normally me. Normally me. See, I like I like Wednesday podcasts because it falls... Uh, then I don't have to rush here after work and then I don't have to rush home and hope that I get decent sleep. But it's fine. I can live. Oh, you mean like right now how it's Tuesday but we release Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, like doing it Wednesday to Thursday? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like, I like it. Well, yeah, but you're weird, so... That's yeah, well, I know, I get real regimented. Well, I, we can't normally... I normally get real up to do them on Mondays, because Monday's Monday Night Raw, and I don't like missing Monday but, Night Raw. I record it, but it's like I come home, I edit, and then by the time I'm done editing and whatnot, say, depending on when we started, I only watch Raw starting at midnight. That means I'm done watching it at 3 in the morning. I'd like to know what day we've uploaded the most of our... Wednesdays. Podcast. Tuesday to Wednesdays, I think. Oh, no, wait. When but do we... we did we did Thursdays and Fridays for a while. We did Fridays for like half a year last year. Oh, yeah. You know, maybe Fridays because Fridays worked really good at the start. Yeah. Yeah. But then we realized we're like, oh, we like going out and stuff. Well, well not really. Yeah, no. no. I shouldn't have said that. Because last time I went Sorry, on, let's correct that. Dan no, has a social well, life is what I'm trying to say. Last Friday I went out and it didn't turn out well. Last Friday I went out <laughs> as well. Hey, Brandon report. Let's no, do it. No, Talk Jets first. Okay, perfect. It's teasing. Yeah, let's tease so it. we're going to talk about a lot of stuff on the show. We're going to talk about the Jets, the Brandon Report. Brandon Report. Uh, very big. Very unimportant. Um, and then just random, like, NHL random stuff. stories. Mailbag. Yeah. Mailbag There's, Mailbag like, stuff. nothing crazy happened this week. There were the no show? trades, but it's the calm before the storm because trade deadline is looming. So Next episode, we're going to be in the thick of it. And then after that, well, after that, yeah. it's, we're, it's over. Holy cr- Time goes by so fast. I know. It really does. Like, there's only, like, 29 NHL games left this season. You know what's funny? I was, I'm wearing my Giants hat right Like, my San Fran Giants hat A little hat less right than now. that, actually. But spring training opens oh, yeah. this week. I know. Um, I told myself when playoffs ended, I'm like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna miss a week at the gym. I haven't gone once. <laughs> not once. <laughs> <laughs> they love me. I'm a long-term investor at the gym. I never show up, but I pay my bills, and I never complain or say anything about it. Just a pushover. Yeah. Uh, and you'll probably notice Dan isn't here again. He's on a very important scouting mission. Incredibly so. important scouting report. Yes. Um, it's pretty confidential. We can't really say much about it. No. We'll let him bust the news if he wants if to. If he wants to. Um, so yeah, he's get... becoming quite the scout. He is. He's he better have like some crazy scouting reports for us. I really hope in the future, as as time comes. What? what? As time goes on. Oh, like we're yeah. gonna become a fr- we're gonna franchise out last man in. <laughs> we'll only we'll, <laughs> we're gonna be special <laughs> guests on our own podcast. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. We're just trying to find a future future bo- I basement think, podcast. I, I think eventually this is going to have to move to like Google Hangout because we won't all be living in the same place. Yeah, yeah. And then you're always going to have that one guy's like, oh yeah, and then you got... Eh, 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 uh, <laughs> no, no, Ryan, you're breaking it. Eh, eh, uh, am I... Can you hear me now? Eh, eh, how come it's always can you hear me now? Like that's the one line that always comes out crystal clear. Uh, am I... Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Britain, uh. Uh, great. Love okay. it. Okay. So since last podcast, three Jets games have been played. Correct. Uh, the Jets are one and two over that time, getting shellacked by the Boston Bruins last Thursday night, six two. Yes, correct. Uh, in their home. In and their home. In oh their yeah, home. in Winnipeg. Yeah, in okay. Winnipeg. Yep. Because we weren't in Winnipeg when no, this happened. Not. We Brandon were. Report. We were in Brandon. Mm-hmm. We're doing a schedule report. And then so they played Saturday night, which was Pavlik's first game back. They played Edmonton, which was the first time Connor McDavid had played the Jets and they were luckily able to win in a shootout and Pavlik looked quite good uh, and Ladd was obviously one of the guys who scored the goal in the shootout because that's what he's done for us over the last five years true uh, we kind of glazed unless we're, we're going backwards I don't know how we're doing you, this you can go I guess backwards. we should have talked you about can go this. backwards we glazed over if Pavlik's in the lineup what does that mean? It means one of our goalies has to be sent down. Uh-huh. I wanted to go back to that, though. Correct. Because Let's that is a it. bigger storyline than what's is. happened. Ooh, I just want to say Connor McDavid, the next, the game before he played the Jets. Greg, you saw the highlights. What happened? Who did he play? The Leafs. I, I don't recall oh, this happening. Oh, really? You don't no, recall this don't. happening at all? Okay, well, happen? Connor McDavid had two goals and three assists against the Leafs. 
Yep. And everyone's like, he's such a good guy. He gave Jordan Everly his first hat trick. I don't think Connor was even. I don't think Connor was thinking about that. He, I, I was just thinking he's being a nice guy. Like I don't think that would have been on his mind. Do you keep that in your mind? Your like teammate stats. For you, yeah. Yeah, of it's course. easy. I score once every ten games, so it's kind of a big deal when I score. Uh, obviously, I think it's different at that level. I don't think you. Obviously, it's nice to get a guy a hat trick, but yeah. Well, he could have had a hat trick. It was on an empty net. But honestly, like if you're Blake Wheeler, you know Nikolai Ehlers has two goals. If you're anybody and you know a guy has True. close yeah. to a hat trick, you're, you're going right. to try to get the guy. I guess I was just talking about more the stat that he had never had one. That was yeah. more surprising to me. I to, thought it for it sure me it as well. One. But it's like one yeah. of those things where you, so so few guys had them. Right? Like Patrick like, Kane's crazy stat for yeah. this year, his first regular season hat trick. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> damn it. That's a stat to have. Be like, oh, I got my first hattie. How many do you have in the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know how many I have about that. Well, you know, I've only played in the playoffs every single year. I only have a Stanley Cup game winning goal. Like, whatever. I only have three rings. Soon I'm going to be like every Montreal Canadian player from the 70s and have 10. I was going to say, obviously, your first one, like what, ring finger or like one of the opposite middle fingers? You got to do index. I think index has to be one of them. No, no, I know, but I'm saying your first one. Your first one. Because you don't plan on winning 10 or three. You know, when you get one, you're like, oh, well, I'll put it on one of the middle fingers. And then you just. Middle fingers. Why would you give it? This one. That's a ring finger. Oh, okay, so your that's middle the finger word for does it? this. I said my other middle finger. So it's Why called the ring finger. Yeah, right? I'm not fi- good at science and biology or anything. Look, you know. Don't this. you know the reason why it's called the ring finger is because the only vein that leads directly to your heart, which is completely false. Really? Yeah. Like, you had me line and sinker until you yeah. said completely false. Because if you think about it, all these veins lead to the same place. Because they all pump blood. Oh. And what pumps blood? Your heart. Exactly. Um, Science, math, on That's this a podcast. Tumblr post right there. Oh we should start our own God. Tumblr. No, fuck Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Tumblr. Actually, speaking of which, Tumblr, just slide this in before we move on. I'm going to tweet out a Tumblr post or a Tumblr website. This guy made a – it's a questionnaire of 105 uh, – uh, NHL questions just pick which team over this team it's like Edmonton or Calgary and you pick and pick and then it tells you like your top th- you ranked the 30 teams for you and honest to God guess what was number one for me Calgary. like the Philadelphia my, Flyers and number two Calgary Flames yeah and guess what's number the t- 30 and 29 Winnipeg Jets no no they're like uh, mid-range oh Pittsburgh Penguins New York Rangers close Pittsburgh Penguins Vancouver Canucks <laughs> Devils Canucks. Ooh. Yeah, I just hate the Devils so much. <laughs> and it's not that like, no, no, it's not a hate. It's just, they're so boring. But anyways, so I'd put it on my ring finger, and then I guess you work your way out. You work. Well, your you way you out. got you go from like this hand to this hand to back to back. I wonder if someone. It wasn't there an NBA. Well, there's got to be a few guys who've won eleven. But I remember hearing like a, uh, a story about an NBA player. He had one eleven, and so he put one on his toe. Oh, that's weird. I also know like, oh, was it like Yvonne Cornoyer gave like these guys like these prolific seventies guys from the Montreal Canadiens yeah. that just won. What they won? It was every child's one? play. It yeah. wasn't even close. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I think they won six in the seventies alone, because I think Pretty Philadelphia had two in that decade. 74, 75. And I think then it ended off with the Islanders. And Bruins had two in that decade as well. 70 and 72. Damn. So, and then the rest were Montreal Canadiens. So what did Conway do with his ranks? Did he he just... gave them away to his children and grandchildren. What a badass. <laughs> what a sweet move. Hey, did we mention on the podcast that Henrik Sedin gave away no. his, um, you know, the 91,000 that the uh, players oh, get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave his check to the uh, training staff of the Canucks. Wow, good for him. Mm-hmm. I think it roughly works out to each member got around five grand, which huh. is a sweet bonus for yeah, doing... Yeah, exactly. You, well, do, doing that's job. Where, that's where they make their money, right? Oh, they, they course, get yeah. They all get... Uh, sorry for playing footsies. Yeah, footsies, that's what we're doing. Um, after spending a night in a hotel with you, that's yeah. what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Second At least bets. that one, the second one was consciously. Yeah, the of first, course. The, yeah, first one, it, you just went after me. I'm like, Greg, no! Yeah. No, Greg! <laughs> Spumoni! Spumoni! <laughs> That's not the safe word. <laughs> Dad, but, come back. This is really getting weird. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably where they make, like, yeah. what is five grand to, or what's 91,000 to Henrik Sedin, who probably yeah. makes that in, like... A shift and a half. <laughs> n- not a shift, but, like, but probably in three games or less, I'm going to no, say. No, probably least. in a game. Well, I, okay, Duncan Keith... I, I saw a breakdown of his contract when it first came out a couple of years ago. He made just over 3000 a shift. 
Duncan Keith, and he makes under six a year. Yeah. So I think Sedin Hendricks, makes what eight, seven and a half. Even if he makes six, Either that's way. a lot of cash. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know how we got here, but uh, let's get let's get back let's on just it. Pull this back in the proper lane. Okay. Connor Hellebuck was sent down by the Winnipeg Jets because of the fact that Andre Pavlik came back. A lot of people speculated that they would either run with three goalies or that the second Pavlik came back, he'd either get sent down to the AHL for conditioning stint. But he'd have to clear waivers. No, they can use the loophole that uh-huh. Jonathan Bernier went down on. Okay, right on. Um, so that was their th- that was what some people thought was going to happen. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. They sent Connor Hellebuck down to, to the Moose, uh, and he got a play in Retro Night. Yes! Yeah, the Moose played against the Chicago Wolves, arguably one of their greatest rivals. Yeah, them and, like, the Milwaukee Admirals. Yeah, although, do you remember um, Detroit Vipers? They were sweet, too. But I just want to talk Uh, about... Who were the Grizzlies team? Utah. Utah Grizzlies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or the, uh, well, there's still a... There's still a group, but their logo back then was pretty sweet, too. Orlando Solar Bears. Yep. That was sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, the retro night, Chicago. I remember going into the old Winnipeg Arena, and they were playing Chicago Wolves. Chicago Wolves' mascot used to be the evil Mickey Moose. That's hilarious. I know this because he took my popcorn, dumped it on me, and sprayed my dad and I with silly string. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it was awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, I could understand how some people would get all uppity about that. That's one of my most fondest hockey memories, is getting silly string by evil Mickey Moose. I had a really fond hockey memory this weekend, but we'll get to that in a second. Nice tease again. Yeah, Good exactly. Again. But yeah, what happened was the Manitoba Moose, they played their, they wore 1996 retro jerseys. Oh my God, did they look I right? will find a picture and tweet those oh. out, because they are sweet. And the number is just topping. Oh, I was ho- like... They should go back to those jerseys. I know they won't, but like, could you make a Winnipeg Jets retro moose jersey out of that jersey design? Because that jersey design is nice too. Oh, like with the horn, like like with the slanted stripes. Yeah, the moose the way it is, like such a cartoon moose. It's hilarious. It's not ferocious in any way, shape, or form, but it's just it doesn't need to be ferocious. Exactly, it's amazing. I'd be okay with that. It'd be great. That's how they came into the IHL. Was with that. Like, well, because they became the, they took Minnesota Moose. Yes. And they just kind of tinkered with the logo a bit. Just a tinge. Like, not very much. Not very much. Yeah. But, I, but see, we, we, Moose are so fond of our heart because we watched them growing up. Like, yeah. the Jets left when we were five. Like, I don't have very many memories. Well, of that's why I always tell people, Jets. like, that's why I'm still a huge Leaf fan. Is yeah. Because I grew up falling in love with a team that broke my heart every year that, you know, the heart just, it, it wants what it wants. Yeah. You as just Selena going. Gomez would say. Is that the quote? That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's lyric? a song. A heart wants what it wants? The heart wants what it wants. And I think it was a song to Justin Bieber from Selena Gomez. Oh, wow. You're a good looking lady. She is very fine. I hope she would write a song about me. I would want her to write a song about me too. Same mm-hmm. with Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift threw some shade on Kanye this week. That weekend. was hilarious. Very, very nice way of throwing shade, but she threw it nonetheless. I would throw shade Kanye's way. Come at me, Kanye. He's fifty million dollars in debt. debt. Well, see, here's the thing, Kanye. To his company. If, it's his company, though, not him. If you saw me, I would be able to help you because I'm a financial specialist. Yeah, that's well. Yeah, you always break down numbers here. Exactly. I, I see the paper, like Greg's paper. You guys can't see anything, obviously, but um, I see like all these numbers when he's trying to break something down, so it makes sense to me. But over the air on the podcast, when I'm listening <laughs> to it again, I'm like. Oh, this makes no sense. This is the exact moment everyone stopped listening. <laughs> right here. Oh. Yeah. All right. Okay, so, so Connor Hellebuck, sent down from the Jets to the Moose. What's the next move in this goaltending, I guess... Issue? Issue, yeah. Um, Controversy. You get... You, I, I, for me, there's only one answer. You have to move one of them. Who do you move to where and for what? Because the goalie market right now... Unless you're the Arizona Coyotes, is very, very... Rough. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the easy question, or the easy answer in my head, would be Calgary, one of them. Um, now, is it going to be Comrie or Pavlik or Hellebuck? I'd like to say it's not going to be not, Hellebuck. What about Hutchinson? Oh, you my said goodness. Yeah, you Him said Comrie, you mean Hutchinson. I meant all of them. All okay. Because um, I don't think Comrie's going to get moved. I think he's going to develop in the okay. AHL for the next five, Perfect. four or five years. Well, then out of Hutch, Hellebuck, and Pavlik, ideally you want Pav because then you get rid of that contract. And then is Hellebuck done this year or is Hutch done this year? Like RFA contract. I think one of them. I, I know Hutchinson's One or the other. other. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like you're not going to get much for Hutch. 
No. I'm not trying to rhyme it, but it, I think after last season, you could you could get a little bit more for him. This season, he hasn't played as well, but you haven't given him enough chances, and the team's not playing that well. You know, with Mark Stewart out now, the team's just not. What did he go down with? I Broken didn't... something. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Which is, well, helps stuff. the tank for sure. And the moment this went live on, like, people caught wind on Twitter. Everyone was like, oh, Jets are tanking it and throwing it in. You know what? Okay. That's fine. I'm not, okay, I'm always an advocate for tanking. But don't, don't listen to me. I'm not the greatest at this. However, the Jets have always fallen between 7 and, what, 12 yep. with their pick. That's not going to, that's, that's a real good addition to your team. But that's not, like, the guy. We've talked about this plenty of times. If you get a top five... That's expected to be, that's your guy. Yep. And maybe this is the year to do it. Their last, like, top pick was Zach Bogosian and Evander Kane. Those are their last, like, high-end picks. Before that, it was Patrick Stefan. <laughs> yeah, but and then the first leg- one Legitimately, happened. though. Like, this year, you've got four or five for sures that are going to be studs in the NHL. Whether it's Lane, Pujarvi, Matthews, Kachuk, you can put Chitrin, Chitrin on that list. To bring it right on the right on the cusp. That's the thing too, though. It, what the, I would love to see the Jets do, and I doubt it's going to happen, but if they could somehow get Andrew Ladd, you know, throw him away, and get somebody who's on the cusp of making the playoffs and have that team fall short, and then they're able to get two, like, top 15 picks. And then swap it in for a top four? No. No, I still think they're going to finish in the bottom four of the league. Oh, so you mean do what the Flyers did last year, basically. And get lucky, yeah. Where they got Provorov at seven, seven, and then they got Konechny, which just for some reason, they... The situations and teams, you have your your eye set on a guy. But here's the other thing, too, though. Like, the, the Jets might have the power if, let's say, Jacob Truba doesn't sign. Or that they they just can't do it right. Okay. That they can use that piece to get, you know, let's say a chit, um, you know, let's say they get Chitra in a four, and we talked about this before. Yeah. Then they move Truba not to get Hamannik, but to get another, to move up in the draft, to get another first Ooh, round pick. To get like a, say hypothetically they pick at four. Okay. And then they get in again at like they they eight. They get eight for Truba and what blank. Yeah, and then they get like a Goche or a Nylander. I think those guys will complement this team a lot. I'm not saying I want to We're see Jacob yeah, Truba go, exactly. but it's speculation, right? Yeah. And it's ways to make this team better. Like TSN released their, what, top 50 non-NHL affiliated or non-NHL prospects. Correct, yeah. Num- number one was William Nylander. Yeah. Number four was Kyle Connor. Yeah. Correct? I believe... Yeah. Oh, no, he's five, maybe? Okay, well, he was in the top five. Either way, but that was the only Jet It was the, the only list. Jet. And 50. But, but when you think about it, it didn't take into, like... I guess you could talk... Well... I don't think Nick Batan, J.C. LePon, like, those guys count because they've played in the NHL game? No, they counted... Okay. They, they counted um, guys who hadn't... I think it was less than 10 NHL games. Okay, played. but Nick Batan's played 11. Oh, sorry then. Yeah, I didn't realize Okay, that. That, that's that's the only thing. is I think Nick Patan's still in that list. I still think he's there. Yeah, um, he's better than a good chunk of the guys on that list. I mean, I'm being and, biased, and I think but. they've overlooked Chase DeLeo on that list as well. Yep, top score on the... Uh, top goal score on the Moose. Yeah, top points score now. Top points as well. Good. He finally passed <laughs> to Brandon Kitchen, the yeah. defenseman. <laughs> Which has been kind of a surprise, and I think that he's a guy that could maybe find a way to oh, work into the lineup. If Truba... But Postma also hasn't had a chance to play much this year. This was tonight was his like third game of the season. Why is that? Just just the way they haven't odd, odd tinkered. The they haven't tinkered. Well, first of all, the defense has been healthy for the entire year, and they haven't tinkered enough with their lineup. Like last year, they were scrambling to find D. They picked up Jay Harrison. This year, they haven't needed that, and it's very shocking because the first six, well, the first four years, that's been their biggest hole was the fact that they were always going down on defense, whether it was Enstrom or Buff. You know, the, Stewart's the first time they've had a big injury on the defensive side all season. So, who's that? I, oh, I, oh I actually could see Jay Harrison getting moved at the deadline. He's a solid seven. He's a solid six, seven. extra guy. You know, Toronto, when they made the playoffs in 2013, they picked up Brown O'Byrne, which wasn't like a fantastic pickup, but he's a guy who's played in the playoffs before, and he's a guy that can help a young team out. I don't Reliable. see why a team like the Florida Panthers don't pick a guy like him up. 
Yeah, it's not going to hurt your team. No, exactly. And then you can package Lad and him for whatever else you want. For Alexander Barkov, I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Or you Actually, get Lawson Barkov is, uh, got placed on the IR. You could get Lawson Krauss, maybe? For Ladd and Harrison? You never know. What, are we throwing Jacob Truba in there, too? Nope. And, and our first? But remember, Krauss is like, ceiling is second line. You can put Ladd I'm all sure they want to. I'm sure they want to hold on to Krauss. Okay, fine. Just to see what he has to offer. We'll throw in Okunura as well. Ooh, wow. <laughs> this, is how I I do, see- this is how I do NHL trades. I'm like, okay, you won't accept that? Second round pick. You won't accept that? First round pick. Boom. That's how it works. Yeah? <laughs> Um, I'm the I'd be the worst GM. I never have draft picks, and I just have the most intense like lineups. It would just be ridiculous. A guy that could I could see Safer talking to Florida, although apparently that's been next multiple times now. Mm-hmm. Um, Rocco Grimaldi. He's tinier though, so mm-hmm. I don't know. But hey, uh, tiny, size doesn't matter in the NHL anymore. Apparently, no, it's so. it, it's gone to the smaller people, and one um yeah, one of those small guys got a goal the other night. But we we'll talk about that later. Um, as we'll now move to Brandon. I don't have anything else oh, to talk about on yeah, the Jets, well, unless just, you do. Yeah, just quick quick notes here. Uh, the, on Friday, or Thursday, when they played the Bruins, yep. they matched last year's regular season loss total with 26, and now they're now at 27, or 28 losses, you were saying? Yeah, regular they're at 28 season. now. Already, which is last year's total. So there you go on that season. And there is big, lots of speculation rolling around that Winnipeg will get the outdoor game, a heritage game. It'll be... It's widely speculated it's going to be Edmonton, and the game will be played in late October. Okay, so things that late October weather here is probably around, you know, low ones, twos. Yeah, I don't know how. I, but the right air now, is colder, I could th- right? I could throw a gla- hot glass of water, maybe a third of it will touch the snow. It's going to be evaporated. I don't know. I, I get you can't do it in minus 40, but like Dece- early December would be better, but I'm not a professional at making outdoor games either. So the other thing is too is I'll be honest. Every time I've gone to an out, like whenever I've gone to a Winnipeg Blue Bomber game, which is CFL here in Canada, yeah. um, and it's you know late October, early Jan or early November, it sucks because it's turning, it's a wind tunnel. <laughs> it's it's one. It's a wind tunnel, and it's that turnover from winter or from like fall to winter. So your body hasn't adapted to the cold yet. Oh, right. So I feel that doing a game in right now, you know, to, it's supposed to be plus four here on Thursday. I know you're not going to nail it every time. But if you do a game in late February, early March, like they're doing right now in Minnesota, how much different is our weather compared to Minneapolis? It's only six and a half hours away. It's not that different. So why they're going for early October, I know why, but if it, it's not because of the weather. It's because of economic reasons. Because they'd have to keep the stadium open and running oh, right. all that time, Perfect. so it's not economically do sound for them to do yeah. it. Okay, so that's why they that's what they're doing in October. Even though, while the personally, thing. I still think it would be better for them to do it in March or late February because oh, because then the season nice the, you just open the arena or stadium early. Exactly. Oh, yeah, it's way smarter. I didn't think about that at all. Well, but the the NHL is just looking at this, and it's it's a good way to get. You know, show Austin Matthews versus Connor McDavid for the first time. Might as well. I hope not. Could you imagine? No, that? I want Austin to go to Toronto, not Winnipeg. Okay, fine. Puyarvi versus Connor McDavid for the first time. Or yeah, well, no, either way, it'd be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. It'll be a good spectacle. It'll be great to sh- like. I really want them to pump up Connor McDavid and showcase him, and I really want the Oilers to do some tinkering this off season to really get better. So it'd be like oh, you mean to the, finally <laughs> trade one of those six first round picks for? It'll be like the new and improved Edmonton Oilers versus the. Let's hope this works this season when it pays. They've got some duct tape. I think it's holding <laughs> together a second line. It's doing pretty good. You know, and maybe maybe next year is the year that emerges some of these other players. Maybe Kyle Connor comes and they're like, "Okay, come, come now." Yeah. You know, we don't know Chase the Leo. We really don't know what next season's going to hold. So we'll just you know, Brendan Lemieux might be on the team next year. Because yep. he was a last second cut this year. And Brendan LeBue with LePon were beautiful. And you throw Andrew Kopp in the middle of them? Yeah, fourth line. There you go. Who knows what you get in the lad deal? Who knows what you get at draft day? We got to have a, a lot of unknowns. predictions in the summer. There's a lot of unknowns, but I'm excited for that game to happen. Correct. I'll be watching it on TV, though. You're not going to try and go? I do not have any desire to go 
I don't know why. Just an, and I was having this conversation yesterday at dinner um, that I have no desire to watch a Super Bowl live. Is it the money money factor? It's is or is it, it the worth fact it? that there's a ton of people who go just to be like I went? It's part of that. I don't like but that. It's, it's why would I go? It's one of those things that I feel is better to watch on TV. It's better to get together with a group of your friends than go with two people that you know. It, it, That's very. It's true. it's like the Grey Cup, which is our version of the Super Bowl here in Canada. It is more fun to sit there and watch it with a group of friends than it is to go to it. In my personal experience, yeah. and I've been to two. I yo, it's you know what? Honestly, I went this past season because it was in Winnipeg. I've had way more fun. I had fun. But I have way more fun hanging out with my friends. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't think I could say the same thing for Stanley Cup final game. I think going to the Stanley Cup finals, going to like game one or two. Close. Playoffs it, are in different things. Exactly. Yeah. It's not outside either. But it, it's. I, I just feel that the spectacle itself is fantastic. It'd be cool to be around the week. Like I told my brother this. It'd Fan be fest awesome. would be amazing. It'd be fun to go down next year to Minnesota to go for the Super Bowl, right? Two years. But not, or in two years, but not go to the game. Oh, yeah, because the, the festivities would be great. The festivities would be fun. You could find a bar. You get a bunch of people. Like, you could go down with eight friends. You guys rent a hotel. You do all those things. And you could just enjoy the night and you're around the atmosphere. You just didn't go to the game. But that's fine. And that's just me personally. Like, I think experiences are great. But I think it, it's about who you share it with. And if you can only afford one or two people and you're around a bunch of people that, frankly, don't really know that much about And depending yeah. on the situation, you could have a terrible time. Exactly. Yeah, and why? Why would you soil that when it? I had a blast. I just sat and watched the game this year at my friend's house. So, uh, we have to move on, though. Correct. We were in Brandon on Friday. We were. We were doing a scouting report on Flyers prospect Ivan Provorov, future yeah. Toronto Maple Leaf Nolan Patrick. He looked great. And uh, John Quen, Joe John Quenville. John Quenville. And the very awesome Saskatoon Blades jerseys. Now, if you're from Saskatoon and you're a Blades fan, I must say you're. Yellow and blue jerseys are perfect. I love those. I think they're considered their alternate at the moment. I think so, too, maybe yeah. their new homes. I don't know. I don't That'd know. be great. They're, they're nice. They're nice jerseys. Very nice retro. Um, I have to say, though, we got free breakfast from Smitty's that night. Thanks to who? Who got the goal? I don't know, but they um, actually won. Because the reason why we're in Brandon is I coach a, a kid team in hockey. And we were there for a hockey tournament in Brandon. And actually, two Brandon Wheat Kings presented us with our trophy when we won the championship this Who year. Who were the... I don't remember. 25 and 14. Yeah. So there you go. Look Don't it up on Hockey like, TV yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Super nice guys, but uh, I got to do a thing at the game. You did get to do a thing. So I'm sitting there drinking my alcoholic beverage, talking to one of my fellow coaches. While... I was doing my report on my sausage. I got a sausage <laughs> and deep fried pickles... Delicious, both of them. You get so a chance I, to go I'm, there, get them. Delicious. I'm sitting there talking with my coaches, and one of the Wheat Kings girls that like do all the event coordinating comes up to me, and they're like, hey, does anybody want to do the shot from center ice because we really need somebody? I'm probably five or six beers in at this point. And you pretty much had nothing that day so far for food. I, for food-wise, the only thing I'd eaten was when we went to where did we go for lunch. We went to a w that day for lunch, and that was the only thing and I And you ate. only ate your burger. You didn't even eat your fries. You I didn't drink finish half. my fries. Yeah. yeah oh, I, I ate them. Yeah. I ate so much. So I had to take <laughs> like was, a, a food coma nap. That was, I was hilarious. Like, Guys, I'm, gonna, I'm not coming swimming. Why? Uh, can't move. <laughs> Cam's like laying on her bed. He's just uh, laying on his bed in our hotel room. Actually, on his sleeping bag because he sleeps in a sleeping bag at hotels. What a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> it's normal. I wasn't the so, only person. I know. Um, so I'm, I'm like, he's in his food coma. Whatever. So I got to do the shot from center ice. So I'm like, hey... We're standing there right by the gates. They're finishing up doing the Zamboni and the ice, and I get to go on and do the shot, which you got to shoot from center ice into the small hole for $250 gift card to their mall, which would have been nice. I would have spent it at Sport Check or EB Games. I would have loved it. Um, so obviously you can tell I already didn't win. But nonetheless, I was like, I asked them, I was like, so I shoot left, what kind of stick can I use? They're like, well, all their sticks are over there, so you can pick whatever stick you want. And the moment I saw Greg, <laughs> I was like... Oh, I know what stick he's going to pick, <laughs> just to spite me. So I was talking to a girl, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll just, like, I think I had Quenville, st- I had either Patrick's or Quenville's stick, I can't remember who I had, and she's like, well, didn't you mention your friend's an Ivan Provorov fan, maybe you should use his stick, and that was a stick I was looking for, I was like, oh, Ivan Provorov, I'll take that, 
and like it was still wet, like used from the game, <sighs> and I'm like wiping it down. I just feel so good about myself, and I'm just thinking. You Cam look over so at me. Jealous. You're holding the stick, and I'm like, I, steal it, <laughs> steal it, Greg, give it to me. So I go to center ice, and they're like, "Hey, take your time." And I stick handle it a couple times. I'm like, "Oh, this feels good." And then the puck becomes one and a half pucks. I'm like, "Shit." The beer's catching up to me. As I look down, all the blood's like rushing to my head. I'm like, shit, 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 shit. And then you get that. <laughs> so I just launched it at the net. Ripped it. Like you half clapped it in. <laughs> and you it hit did, the net though. It so didn't miss by much. No. Maybe, maybe like two and a half pucks. I was proud you hit the net. Yeah. Because that's a key thing. A lot of people go wide and I'm like, you can't go wide. So my dad texted me, and he used to play in Brandon uh, when he was playing junior. And he's like, oh, it's fine. I missed the net from a lot closer than that. Don't worry. Like, just to make me feel better. He's like, but I still probably would have made the show. I'm like, I hate you. Like, there is a video somewhere. Oh, somewhere. Yeah. I'll never release it. It's only for me. <laughs> I have a whole section of oh, children yeah. chanting, Greg, you suck. <laughs> Seriously, so, it's yeah. real. <laughs> so my entire hockey team was there, and they're just... <laughs> The oh. greatest. They're the greatest. And like the girl who like got me, she's like, man, they don't like you. I'm like, well, let me tell you. Half that section is a team we play against very often who probably doesn't like anybody that is a part of this team. And then the rest is the team I coach. And so then they're, the, so they're both teams it. just clued in on your yeah. name. And they're like, Greg, you suck. Greg, you suck. Boo, boo. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it, was, it was hilarious. It was, it was a moment I'll remember. And I'm yeah. like... I did that at a WHL game. Yep. And I think that is great. Oh, it's so much fun. I like junior hockey. I just love junior hockey. And you could tell, like, they're they're chirping, they're filthy mouths. They love their hockey there, though. Oh, it's awesome. What was the score, by the way? What? What was the score? 7 1. 7 1 Brandon. (laughs) And because they were like 65 to like 20 or something. So we, uh, my team got to play there the next day, and they had the same shot total. It was 55 to 26. Okay. 55, so, though. Yeah, it was something. It was Which something. means the goalie still made 48 saves. And lost. It was Len lost. Six goals. <laughs> goalie hates that team. <laughs> exactly. Fuck the Brandon Week. God no. dang it. Um, but it was a very it was a very fun trip. Uh, it was super cool to see Ivan Provorov play. And Nolan Patrick. And, like, you're watching future stars of the game before they're, before they're the stars. And I, I let, that's what I like about junior hockey. It's great. I the, like obviously I was very excited for Ivan Provorov and like he didn't disappoint really he didn't score but he didn't disappoint. Oh, he's a, such a smooth skater. Yeah, that's what I noticed. But what the guy who stood out for me, I know I went in looking for him anyways, but Nolan Patrick. Oh. Like, I don't think he lost. I don't think he went into a corner and didn't come out with the puck. Like actually, his, it was crazy. His straight up just ability on the ice was incredible. And you're like, yeah, that is. And I was t- when I was like waiting and I was talking to some of the event people and like. I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. I'm watching a future, like, top three pick. Yeah, this is him. This is what he's going to do. And he's like, oh, yeah, like, Nolan Patrick's great, and he's awesome with the community. Like, this kid is, I don't know, I don't wouldn't say he's overlooked at this point in time. I just don't think people have heard as much about him because he's not from the OHL. He's not a U.S. product. He's from, he's a prairie boy. Wait. It's just like Jonathan Taves. When yeah. he came into the NHL... He wasn't as like well known. People as a number only three found pick. out about him when uh, World Juniors, and that's when they're going to find out about Nolan Patrick next year. <laughs> we were shocked that he got cut this year. Yeah, but the team was just well, I didn't the team wasn't great. great but... but they had a vision, and he wasn't a part of that next year. Uh, I think um, Kelly McCrimmon's the head coach next year. Yeah, I, well, if he's not, he's going to be the assistant, yeah. which is the head coach of Brandon, his coach. Oh, so, we also saw a fight there. That was cool. Oh. We did, it did. Oh, I missed that fight because I was getting my icy. Icy oh. is like a carbonated, fluffy cloud. Delicious. See, I was um, drinking beer. And well, I don't was, remember just, the just rest mentioning of the night, Kelly McCrimmon. Um, he he had a great suit. Pants could have been a little yep. more hemmed. He was wearing like New Balance, like four yeah, seven. Exactly. Like, I was what like, are what are you doing? <laughs> and you know, we're getting older when we're commenting on the coach's apparel, yeah. not the equipment. But well, I'm like, I, I could, I could be that guy. I could totally be that guy. We so, all have that suit. I'm like... I could steal my dad's shoes. They're like five sizes too big, but I was but like... I, uh, I was very... It, it, you soak it all in when you go to a junior game. Oh, so much fun. It's great. The prices are affordable. You know what I got, Greg? I got... Well, 725 I got, beers. It was great. 725 beers? I had... Or no, $7 beers. Nice. Fantastic. I had the sausage and the pickle spears. <laughs> eight bucks. 
Uh, my that's, cheeseburger. That's not even a jet dog. A jet dog's 13 bucks and my nothing on it. My cheeseburger was $4. And what's it was good? It was delicious. I was also Sweet. sick of beers deep, but it was delicious. No way. Oh, so. I got a sweet workout shirt, Brandon Weekings workout shirt. Yes. And they worked it out so that the price equals even numbers on all their items. Well, yeah. It was forty four twenty five, so it was fifty flat. It's the little things, Greg. <laughs> I have a tiny mind. Okay, I was like, oh, fifty dollars flat, cool. I don't have to give a change. <laughs> they paid for it, and the ladies are gonna be like, wow. Not from around here, are you there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Just gives you that look like, what the fuck's this guy? Yeah. Who's this guy? Guys, we got another city boy. I don't know what <laughs> happened. So, now to move to the NHL, obviously, because yeah. there's not really much else. But, great time in Brandon. If you ever have a chance to go to any kind of junior game, I would say definitely do it. Take full um, advantage of that team. Exactly. Wherever you are. All right. Uh, Greg, how do you feel about your Toronto Maple Leafs in their 100th season getting snubbed out of Basically Every- everything. And by that, I mean the, tr- the Chicago Blackhawks were announced to host the 2017 draft. It'll be the first time. Because they, they haven't had anything over the last five years. Yeah. Well, what have nothing, they had? Nothing. <laughs> They've never been in a stadium series game or a winter classic or anything. No, they haven't had anything. I don't think they've ever raised a Stanley Cup banner. Oh, nothing. As of... Um, this is bullshit. Uh, this is Bullshit. Uh, what's the K? Okay, correct You're, me if I'm wrong in this stat. As of Sunday, once they play Minnesota at the stadium series, you should watch it if you get a chance. It's gonna look real cool. Um, Nine after Sunday, when is the game playing being played? It's at two in the afternoon. Two in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Um, after this Sunday, Chicago has played more outdoor games than Toronto has played uh, playoff games in the last decade. So eight. Eight. Isn't that a hot load? That's oh, not fair. You're... Spread it out. Come on. Even like the Flyers and the Flyers and Pens are rumored to be playing each other in another game, outdoor game. Yeah. So we're not a, they've played before an outdoor game? I believe so. It, it doesn't matter. Flyers have been in them and so have the Pens. Give it to other people. My only I question don't care is, anymore. Is how is the fuck how is the fuck? Yep. How is it that Montreal, Toronto have the same amount of winter classic games as fucking Buffalo? Well, how did Buffalo sneak into the first one? I don't know. Who was the owner? It wasn't Terry at least Perdue Montreal. At, okay, at least Montreal's had Heritage Classic games. Toronto's had one outdoor game ever. Period. And it was awesome. There was, was snow cool. everywhere. It was against. We Detroit. ordered that delicious pizza. That pizza that killed me inside. That was like two inches thick. But nonetheless, that's that's garbage. It, it's yeah, it, it's stupid. Especially with what they're doing to BMO Field, it would have been awesome. For them to take it there and do it at BMO Field. Yeah, and BMO, BMO Field is the outdoor uh, arena for the Toronto Argonauts and, and TFC, TFC soccer team. So it would have been a good, like they've just done a bunch of stuff so they could have the Grey Cup there next year. And It looks beautiful so far. Why, why is it the NHL doesn't want to take advantage of that? I understand growing the game in the States, but... Montreal have, got everything in their hundreds. Exactly. Years. Toronto still is celebrate in the bridge the of Celebrate the heritage. Six. I understand so many people hate Toronto. Whatever, celebrate the heritage of a team that has been around for 100 years. Celebrate that That's heritage. 100 years, and you won't even give them a draft? Not even the draft. Or All-Star game. Or a fucking outdoor Winter, game. Winter Classic. It's still on or, the fringe, apparently. Or a playoff game. Because, let's be honest, it won't make the playoffs next year. <laughs> but, you know what you could do? Well, because... McDavid helped out. McDavid's still a Leaf fan at heart, so he's like, you know what I can do? I can torch the Leafs and help with Tank Nation. Yeah, you can. And that's what they're doing. It's tough. Every team I cheer for, except for Colorado, is in tank mode, which is great. Every team? Well, the two teams I cheer for. Oh. Toronto and Winnipeg, and then Colorado. I'm finding it harder. Like, today I was watching some stuff from the first season. I was like, man, I was such a huge Jets fan. What the fuck happened? Because, like... <laughs> Dude, I was a Jets fan in year one and two of then, and then it's just like a wall hit, and I'm like, why the fuck are you doing Why? I, why am I here? I still remember going to that New Year's Eve game when they played Toronto, and wearing my Toronto Maple Leafs jersey, being like, I should be cheering for the Jets tonight. And now I'm like, I'm not going to even wear my Jets jersey to do a Jets. Like, I'm trying to sell my Jets jersey. <laughs> something for me is lost now, and it's just, I'm still going to go to Jets games because I think Jets games are fun to go to. I'm going to support the team. But they've, for me, I'm just not as hyped as I once was. And it I seems don't know what like, it is. Uh, for me, it's, I think it's because I was, 
we were trying to prove to people we could have the team, and now we're almost arrogant that we have a team. And, and I don't like that arrogance. That's one of the reasons. But in my mind, I've also talked to a few people about this. I found it to be the complacency of the management and how oh, yeah. they keep selling that they had a five-year plan. We're in year five, and we're no better than we were in year one in terms of standings and whatnot. And yet they keep saying, oh, no, we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. Yet they really show no promise of actually going after it. They did show a little bit by trading Evander Kane and getting what they did, but that was only because it became such a pressing issue that they had to do it. Else... They Maybe probably wouldn't still be. Well, speaking of, though, Kane apparently went to the <sighs> uh, NBA All-Star game, partied with some people, missed yes. practice the next day. And so the team... Suspended him for so, a uh, Like sat him out, suspended yeah. him. I guess you could say suspended, but they sat him out for the game tonight. Or yesterday, I'm not sure. He says he's learned, I don't know, um, as much as a lot of people have strong opinions about him, I'm at the point now where I'm like, I don't really care. Yeah, I've. I honestly, I if I'm time. in the position Vander Kane was in, and I and I'm a fan of basketball, which I'm not. Like, if it was March Madness, I could see myself wanting to go that, to that, but I'm not a fan of NBA. So, myself, I wouldn't have any pressing like any reason to go. But somebody who's a fan, which Vander is, and somebody who would obviously soak that in and appreciate it, I can understand going to the game. I have no issue with that. No issue with hanging out with Drake after or whoever he hung out with after, but being smart about it and knowing, okay, I've got to practice tomorrow. I still need to make sure I get there on time. So we either, you know, because he helicoptered there apparently. I don't know if he could helicopter back. He helicoptered to the Jays game too. Yeah. Those are uber expensive. Like so, the fuel in those are ridiculous. He What he had to do is he probably had to determine in himself before that even happened. He's like, well, I'm probably, I'm going to miss practice. That is the conscious decision he made. We all you at can some make point the conscious make, decision yeah. to say, okay, I'm going to do this, but I still need to make the responsibility to my team to be there. It's a selfish move saying I'm putting myself, putting this experience above my team. Is it something that he's going to regret down the road? I doubt it. He's still making millions of dollars and he got to see something that, you know, won't happen for another 20 years probably. probably an All-Star it was very game. cool. And he also got to see Kobe's last All-Star game, which is also very cool. He also got to see Drake's very awkward t- player intros. I You probably didn't watch, but they were, <laughs> they were... I had no interest. It would be like you going to an MLB game and introducing people. Like, seriously, like, n- maybe like half the players, if that, knew who he was. And then the players who did were like, hey, the other players just like walked right past him. You know that Hotline Bling song that sucks? That's his song. You used to, Greg. You you used to, you used to. That's just such a terrible song. Okay, moving to the Toronto Maple Leafs, back to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Of course. Last year, they traded away Cody Franzen around this time to get a couple picks that turned into Jeremy Braco, Travis Dermott, and a couple other players. And they also got this little chestnut in Brendan Leipzig, or as Don Cherry would call him, Brendan Leipzig! Brendan Leipzig, nah. Yeah. And he scored his first ever NHL goal. In his first ever NHL game. And it was a nice goal. It batted it batted out of the air. air in what was an absolute... Or no, they won that game. They beat Vancouver when Vancouver was sporting their old jerseys, which was actually kind of nice. I did not mind those jerseys. The retro jerseys They actually were looked sick. good. They Go back to those Van City. Yeah, those were nice. Only because I don't really like the color scheme right now, but that's just me. That, I, I actually did not mind the jerseys they were wearing. Liked what Ryan Miller did with his pads. Um, but Brendan Leipzig's goal was scored in front of... Uh, my former teammate, Greg Leipzig, and uh, his mom. And it's funny, like, I randomly played with Greg for six games Brendan's one season. Brendan's father. Yeah, Brendan's father for six games on a beer league team. I don't even think you'd remember who I am. Probably not. We We're just all share the same name. Somehow. We all share the same name. Him yeah. and I share the same name. We're both named Greg. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's cool. But no. But that's like, great. It was it's, awesome. It's an awesome moment. Um, they sent him back down today, but legitimately an awesome moment. And. The Leafs played against... Who did they play against last week? Did I mention this last podcast? I'm not sure. You keep going. Who the fuck did they play? I don't remember who they played. They fielded a lineup that had a cap hit of That was 20, on Thursday night. $23 million. Yeah. Their was injured their reserve hit. was $36 million <laughs> that night. That was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. $23 million was what they fielded, which obviously... Talent-wise, it was probably the worst was, team they've ever fielded in... Period. Like period. Like 100 years, you think? Honestly, though, they've got to have been a worse team than that. 
probably they probably been ter- like this was probably the worst lineup of players ever. But there's been teams that are bad. Yeah. And like there's some talent there. It's just an underdeveloped talent. Mm-hmm. So it, it was a definitely an interesting uh, time to be. A but Leaf they fan. have a vision and a plan. It's and clear they, and distinct, and you know what they're doing. Yeah. With Chevy, what the hell? I, Everyone else. Blessed. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't do something at the trade deadline. Either moves Lad for something. He might be gone by the end of next season. And I know season. some people are like Maurice. Next season, no. No, you keep Maurice. He's yeah. a good coach. He's a good coach. He's a good coach. And like, He's got to do with what he has. The only other coach who just got fired, which I want to talk about right now, that if you got a chance to go out would be Mike Yeo. Would yeah, be Mike the Yeo. the only yeah. other person I'd want uh, behind the bench that's available right now. Which, yeah, he just got fired. He was the third coach in wild history. Yeah. The most winning is, but Greg pointed out before he started, they didn't really have a great history before. Well, they had like one year with Marion Gabrick, who's now on injured reserve till probably the playoffs for the LA Kings. What's going on with like suddenly when some teams are like, hey, we're in the playoff hunter, we're there. Oh, yeah, so one of our best players is down. So, so uh, if LA can work it, maybe they'll go after Andrew Lat and we get somebody. Dreams. Yeah, think about these things. Dreams. Very true. I wouldn't mind it. They have but I don't know if they have the cap room. That's the problem. They have a four point four million dollars is what they need. They did take half of Vinny LeCavalier's contract, and then suddenly Vinny LeCavalier decided, "Oh yeah, I could score again." <laughs> Thanks, Vincent. He never did Due that. To the, well, Philly. he didn't play, so you know, I can't really get mad at him. <laughs> How much was his contract? Like four point six million. Five <laughs> million. Five. No, wait, home- it was four point five. Yeah, yeah you're right. Was that a Holmgren contract? Yes. Yeah. Just one. Paul Holmgren has a lot yeah. of mean contracts. So. Mike, yo, the reason why he was fired, they lost, what, 13 in the last 14 games? They were on a horrendous streak. I'm horrendous not sure streak. what the streak was, but it was bad. Um, <clears throat> so, obviously, change was needed. They, they forced a the change in there, hopefully stop the, the bus that's falling off the tracks. Um, unlike Montreal, who's just continuing to tumble. Oh, they officially shut down Carey Price for the rest of the season. They did. They confirmed it. And you know what? A lot of people, like, well, Twitter people, were saying... Maybe they were keeping Carey Price around, um, and like they knew this going in, going in that he was done for the season. But for marketing ticket sale reasons, they were keeping, they were telling him to go for like, oh no, just sell it to the media that you're coming back. Which I don't like. I don't want to agree to that. But I don't think a guy would do that. No, I don't think that if you're he did go cons- get a second look in New York. But some people believe that he actually went for surgery when he was in New York. I don't think that the media, if that's a if tough he didn't angle want to believe, exactly, yeah. that is a very mischievous angle. Would I put a past Montreal do it? Really, how hard Would is I it? Would I put a past Michelle Terrier? No, no, not He's at a, all. How shitty is it going to be when Montreal falls all the way down to like eighth spot and picks like Gauthier or fucking Nylander? and they get another piece of their puzzle, which still won't help them win. It's going to be a yeah because the. They rely too much on goaltending, and, you know and their crazy? coaching is a bit... I do not think Michelle Terrien is a good coach. No, me neither. You know what's insane, though? You know what, like, you have to go through, like, the nuances of, like, oh, we fired a coach, we have an interim coach, and blah, blah, blah. But you know what the end is. Like, Montreal, they need to have a French-speaking coach. Who's a French-speaking coach right now? I think he's... If he doesn't have a job... Guy Boucher? Exactly. Just cut the cord and bring him in right now. Instead of... And he can... He brought a... Sticks and Stones, Tampa Bay Lightning team to the conference finals yep. in 2011. That team wasn't that great. They had fucking statue Dwayne Rollison in that. They had a young emerging Steven Stamkos, which was in his first ever real playoff run. Just passing prime, prime St. Louis, Saint Louis. Cavalier. Exactly. They didn't really have anything oh, big on that team. And they had a playoff hero in... Sean Bergenheim. Exactly. Yeah, every... Like... And I thought Guy Boucher was wrongly terminated there. Um... Obviously, what they're doing now. Like, I think Cooper's a good coach. Oh, yeah. I, think Coop- I like him. I am shocked that Guy Boucher has gone this long without a NHL uh, contract. Well, his name was in the runnings for Jets. Yeah. For that, like, the three days that they didn't have a coach. But I also think that he's better to help develop young players than Michelle Terry is. Because he is a... If he doesn't like you, awful. you're blackballed. It's over. You're not Look at playing. Zach Cassian. Yep. And I was so proud when I saw Zach Cassian on the ice for the Edmonton Oilers when they were playing against the Winnipeg Jets the other night. It was nice to see. Because I felt awful for him. Or um, P.A. Parento. Yeah. 
There you go. One of his worst statistical seasons in Montreal, and then he comes back and look, he's, not he's doing, doing terrible. Not bad. Not doing I think terrible. he's maybe 25, 40, They could use him points. in Montreal in terms of like he's a depth player that fills a need. But they um, blackball their players. And he Michel Terry. I am not a fan of him as a coach. I just straight up am not a fan of him as a coach. And I think that Yeah, they I think it's time to cut cut the cord. I think that it's time to get rid of their GM as well. Mark they, Bergeron, they just extended him. I know. But that's a perfect time to let him go because that always happens. <laughs> Who doesn't but do that? It, it's one at well. Look at what they did with Dave Nonis in Toronto. Yeah. But it's it's one of those things where your team has no vision. There's no identity to the Montreal Canadiens except for Carey Price. When he is not there, there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, because you can look at, smother PK Subban, get in his head, and then it's over. Look at all the look at all the Stanley Cup winning teams over the last. I will take five years, six years. Okay. So you have the uh, Chicago Blackhawks of last year. Feisty scorers beat you up and down the lineup. They've been there much. before. They've been there before. They know what they're doing. Yep. L.A. Kings, just tougher than you, bigger than you, stronger than you. Jonathan Quick's going to beat you every night. But they've got the depth in their lineup. Correct. Chicago Blackhawks 2013. They've been there before. They know what the fuck they're doing. they got Brian, Brian Bickle, who's playing unbelievable now of his mind. Yeah. The, um, the LA Kings of that year, Cinderella, Jonathan Quick, and Rodon, just uh, Jeff Carter, Mike Richards, and a bunch of other that players 70s coming line together. That 70s that just clicked together. And that, no, that was 2014. Oh, sorry. My bad. Um, but no, 2012, it was Jeff Carter emerging because, remember, they picked him up for train Jack Johnson, and then they brought Dustin Mike Richards Brown in. Dustin Brown was playing Dustin out of Brown, his mind. Exactly. They brought the team together. Now, the team I wanted to focus on was... The Boston Bruins of 2011 is one of, I think, the best examples of a complete team where you could take one guy out of the lineup and they still can succeed. Two grass, that's fine. They had Tim Thomas. Or, sorry, Tim Thomas was the reason they won. Oh, take well, Tim Thomas away. Two grass. Exactly. Oh, oh, there's your move. depth. Oh, sorry. Um, Lucic can't play? That's fine. Mar- Marchand's there. You know, oh, Krejci, fuck that. We got Bergeron. That is what it takes to be a Stanley Cup winner. Your identity is not with one player, it needs to be with the entire team. The identity of the Montreal Canadiens is Carey Price. Ma- Max Pacioretty is is a fantastic hockey player. Hasn't scored that. It hasn't been outstanding this season. Yeah. Well, also due to the fact that they have a top line center in Alex Galchenyuk that they never play him with the top line wingers of Gallagher and Pacioretty like ever. They'd they play rather like put five games together or some like they'd rather, something very low. I don't know the stat. It's not. It's depressing and like I. Uh, you put Galchenyuk with guys who could produce. I'd love to see the ability that Galchenyuk would make and see what he could do with a guy like William Melander or Mitch Marner or, fuck, even um, Nikolai Ehlers. You know, talented guys who are on the same skill levels he is. And really, like, what the Montreal Canadiens are, they're a mashup of players. They don't have an identity. When they got rid of Brandon Press this season, that was the worst thing they could have done because that gave them a little bit of feistiness. Him and Brendan Gallagher provided something to that lineup that wasn't just Carey Price. You know, P.K. Subban injected some scoring, but now that's all gone because you don't have Brandon Press there and you don't... Brandon Gallagher has to pick up more slack because Max Pacioretty isn't scoring. DeHarnay hasn't been amazing. And P.K. Subban, you know, without Carey Price, the team isn't as good. And Condon's been okay, Scrivens has been okay, but they need superb goaltending to succeed in Montreal. And really, like, the, Carey Price masked what a good, what a bad team Montreal is. And they've been riding that for a couple years now. Yeah, exactly. Well, they rode it to a conference final, did they not? Correct. Yeah, then he got hurt from Chris Kreider. And basically since then, because some people thought he was misdiagnosed, and ever since then he hasn't really been the same. Carey Price? Yeah. I don't oh no think he's no been no no! Same has he, or is yeah. that too far back? That's that's two years ago. Oh, because then he came back with the MVP season. Right. Yeah. Then he had the My MVP bad. season. Okay. Yeah. Where did he so, get hurt again? Where? I think he got oh, hurt last season. Where yeah, he was diagnosed. Yeah. Okay. Um, but moving on from Carey Price and the Montreal Canadiens, it's a very peculiar situation there because they were one of the hottest teams in the NHL, and now they're one of the coldest, one of the worst. I think it's management. I think it's coaching. It's gonna come. It's gonna be a weird off season for a lot of teams, and I think that's one of those teams that's in a weird off season. Another team who is now one of the best teams in the NHL that I didn't really know they were playing this well and hope they would play this well is the Washington Capitals. Oh yeah, There's... going going into tonight <laughs> they had ten regulation losses, only ten. They were the fastest team to thirty nine wins in NHL history. 
it, in incredible. terms of I think they they record per forty or fifty. Like I, I either way in what like forty six games they had thirty nine wins. That's ridiculous. Eh, that's pretty good. Oh, just weird fun tidbit. Um, Ovi scored a hat trick in Minnesota uh, over the over the weekend or within the last week. And there was a few fans in Minnesota who threw their hats on the ice. And Ted Leones has tweeted out, Hey, if you were one of the fans, tweet at me and I will replace your hat. Because that's a classy gesture by you and we appreciate that as an organization. Okay. They are 41-10-4 this season for 86 points through 55 games. They are on pace for uh, like 120 points this year as a team. That's, Florida they Panthers quit now and make playoffs. Florida Panthers are 14 points behind. And they're the next with, team. With two games more played. And they're the next team. And they're the next team. Oh, my God. Now it's this the year. They have six points ahead of Dallas, who also has played three more games than them. Now, and who would you say, and I told you earlier, but who would you say if gave you a blank sheet of paper, who would be your top three or top two scorers on that team? Who do you think would Ovechkin, be top two Nick scorers? Backstrom. I'm not even And who is actually number one? Evgeny Kuznetsov. Has more points than Ovi? And action. What? Because I know Ovi's, I think, leading the league last oh. time I checked in goals. In goals. Man, I mean, uh, Ovi doesn't pass that much. He's got those Ovi assists that the goalie kicks it off his pad and then you <laughs> tap it in. Yep. Wow. How many points does Evgeny Kuznetsov have? I will find that for you. That's right crazy. Now. How you kind of like, you know Kuznetsov is on the team, but you kind of just. Sorry, plays I over. lied. Kuznetsov's fifth in league scoring behind Eric Carlson. Kuznetsov, 56 points. He's at a point per game. Remember last year where we struggled to get a point per game player? We have five players on pace right now to finish a point per game. The Jets. No, the league. Oh, the league. Oh, yeah, Patrick Kane. We were talking about this. On He's the got league. 82 points. <laughs> By the time next podcast, breaks <coughs> down. He's got the big, he's got the black lungs. Oh my god! By that's the time hilarious. next podcast rolls around, Patrick Kane will probably have tied the amount of points that it took to win the Art Ross last year. He's at eighty-two. He's on pace for I he's believe eighteen over more than Jimmy Ben. Points. He has eighteen more than who? Than the nearest guy? Than Jimmy Ben. That's absolutely mad. That's madness. Then you have Panarin. Yeah, that little chestnut Panarin, who's at seventh in league scoring with fifty-four points. Mm, put that on. <laughs> Put the Barry Bond asterisk beside that one. His th- th- line mate's Patrick Kane. I don't. I don't care. I'm just telling That's you. That's why I get my points in beer league. I give Nick, the puck Nick to Backstrom's Greg. ninth and 53 points this season because they have the depth. Ovechkin's 14th in league scoring with 49. I'm still, I'm gonna long shot call this because if it happens, I want to be like, do what I called it. Andrew Ladd <laughs> is gonna end up on the Caps. Oh. You know what? He slots why in not? everywhere. Why not? He they're looking for he that would... final big push. Why why not? Why not? Why not? Send them a second rounder. Send the Jets a second round for Or Lyle. send them anything. A second rounder and like a B level <laughs> prospect. Or, or a first or a first liner. Or a first rounder. They won't send him a first rounder for Andrew Ladd. Um, you never know. Chevy's dug himself a hole. <laughs> I'm telling you he can't. But he only does things when there's not, a gun to his head. He is that not do... crazy though that the Washington Capitals are that good? The only thing, the only, is this the year, as I said earlier, I, that, no, no, not, <laughs> not what you think. Why are you throwing pens in jail? I don't know. Is this the year that the Caps don't have to play the Rangers in the playoffs, <laughs> is what I'm trying to get at. Because um, they play the Rangers, Mr. Lundquist <laughs> does something to the Capitals we have, that uh, nobody else can, not one other guy can do. We have somebody on it. Well, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe we know but, something you don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Here's the thing. I want I want Ovi to win the cup I, to shut all those goddamn penguin pants on. All I want all I want is him to lift it and just kiss it like eighty <clears> times. <throat> and for every angry Canadian that feels that he is a Russian and is no good at hockey, just to a kiss for each and every single one of them as they're yelling at their T V saying they'll never watch the NHL. Look at again. the joy in that man's face every time he steps on the ice. You're telling me he's not an honorary Canadian? You're a terrible person. Look, Look at the joy in his face. But he celebrates too much. He's got to act oh, like a Oh, does he celebrate? Good. I'm glad. If I potted, f- if I potted five goals in the NHL a year, I'd celebrate like I'm going to die tomorrow. Good. If I score 50, goals. I'm doing it in my sleep. He's on pace for 50, for 50 again. More, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Perfect. 
Do it. I want it's, him to keep scoring. It's inc- Don't stop ever, Ovi. As close, like the one thing I do have to say is this year's NHL has been closer than I think any year in, in recent memory. Where like basically the entire league is in the middle of the pack. Then you have like the one outlier, which is Washington at the moment, and it is it, it's been a very exciting year. But for some reason, they haven't gotten the attention I think that they deserve. They're kind of quietly being the best team in the league right now. Yeah, and then, like, it's one of those where, like, you go look back stats and you're like, wait, what the fuck? How did Kuznetso have <laughs> well, that many points? Oh, yeah, because Ovi had that many and because they were destroying everybody, <laughs> which we're not even noticing right yeah. now because everyone's like, hey, look, I'm five points from playoffs. I'm also three from the Austin Matthews. And then oh, there's Ovi. They're like, oh, we're, like, 45 away from him. Oh, that's too far. That's too far of a fall. We're not prepared to take that fall. All right, Greg, you got closing words. I want to close I, on this happy. I, I do want to close on this happy. Of course. But I want to just, I want to look at, a, we'll, you we'll, go. we'll do this, then we'll do the election. Okay, perfect. But uh, if my score app will load here. Of course. I want to look at <clears throat> where the Washington Capitals are and the last place. Yeah, they only have 22 points on the Pittsburgh Penguins at this point in time from not being in the playoffs. Oh, so you mean they could stop playing hockey tomorrow and still make wild card? Yeah. Most likely. I'm sure they're not going to do that. They need. They f- want home ice because they're going to rock the red. They're going to bring their A game. If they win 10 more games this year. 10? They'll finish the 106 points. All they need to do is win 10 more games. How many do they have left? 28? Something like that? Uh, 27. 10 more games? That's a pretty safe bet that it's <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone have 100 equal, points last year? Yes, 50, the Jets had 99. So. That would equal 51 points. And they'd have 106 mm, points on the air. Not. And that's not any more overtime I losses. I want to see 60 wins. How many wins do they have? 41. So they would need 19 wins in their, mm. fi- in their final 27. Oh, that's a big stretch. I don't think so. 60. They're 60. 41 and 14 this year. So they need They're 19 41, wins 10 and 27? Yes. And that is statistically. So 2 and 1 is what they could go. Um, Essentially. Two and a half and one. It's possible. Yeah, they could do They're it. doing four for one right now. And you know what? I was about, What was about to come out of my mouth was, well, they play Florida a few more times. Well, those are probably going to be the losses, which is crazy. I would love to see. Wait, wait. Wait, whoa, 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 What whoa, are the whoa, top two right now? In B- East, we know it's Washington, Washington, Florida. Hell yeah, give me that. Conference. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, Washington, Florida. Okay, who's in the West? Then in the West. Probably Chicago. You got... Oh, you got Dallas and, yeah, Chicago. But, yeah. That's a great Final Four. Do it. But yeah, it, yeah. it won't be because both Dallas and Chicago in the Central. So Los Angeles is leading their division. Damn it. At 69 no. points. No. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I don't want to see L.A. I'm tired of L.A. in the playoffs. When I'm we... just tired of everybody in the Pacific Division in the playoffs. Could we just... Can we just give it to the East? <laughs> just give another off year and then do your double dynasty again. Can we just have Washington, Florida as a conference final and have Dallas, Chicago as a conference final? That'd be great. I'd be okay with that. Or Dallas. Da- no. I, it'll be a first round matchup. But how sweet would Dallas, Colorado be as a s- conference final? It'll be the first round matchup, but uh, as a conference final. I hope Ovi wins. He's got to. No, me too. I want him to win. Oh, yeah. Whole beast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, is that team is still, like, locked up for a little while. So they're still going to be good for a while. And then they keep having these, like, they're like, oh, yeah, you know that guy? How they're like, the next Chicago Blackhawks. Well, they're the team that drafted all the Russians. The Russians keep popping out of nowhere. They're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know when you guys are scared of the <coughs> KHL? And we just kept drafting them, and now they're here. Now they're here, and they're ready to play. <laughs> Let's do this, guys. Benny Kuznetsov is incredible. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. This year was his coming out year, I think, and uh, yeah. Okay, so the election, so the bottom five teams in the Let's NHL. Do it. We start with the Winnipeg Jets. They're dead last. No. Like oh, we're going back six. Five. Yeah. Okay. Then Buffalo Sabers. Boo. Who haven't had enough draft picks over the last few years? Okay. The Columbus Blue Jackets. I'd totally who, be okay with them. I'd, I'd be okay with them. Okay. Edmonton Oilers. Fuck. Add money. And the Toronto Maple Leafs in dead last. Finally. <laughs> they did it. If they fucking get Austin Matthews. You don't want last, though, do you? Like, you want to sit second. No, you want last. 
you want last because that way you're guaranteed a top three. Oh. Because of the new system. And then you get Jesse or no, maybe Patrick a top four. Or whoever you want. I want them to have Austin Matthews. I want Austin too. He's a guy. He's the next Matt. I want him to be like Matt Sundin was. That you knew the Already second with the, the comparisons, puck, Greg. The second Stop the it. puck was on comparison his is the no, no. thief of joy. No, I think Teddy Roosevelt said that. I don't care. Maybe Abraham Lincoln. I don't. I know. don't care. All I want is I want my captain of my team to be what Matt Sundin was like. But the, your captain can't wear his even number. He can't even wear his own number. What number is he? Thirty-four. Because rhyme time's holding it down. He's holding it down. Holding it down. And he can't wear forty-three. Because Kadri's got Nasty that one. Nasty Naz. What if they trade Naz and Kadri? Okay. I wouldn't wear 43. Okay. If that's what you're asking. <laughs> yeah, no, but okay. here's my question. Biggest long shot trade, who do you think is out of, not out of the realm of possibility, but biggest long shot trade? What are you, are you asking me for Naz and Kadri? No, 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 no. Or in Justin Just Jenner? somebody who, like, let's say could be moved. Like, we're not talking Jimmy Ben, Tyler Sagan, Ovechkin, but somebody who's on an alien team that could go somewhere and succeed, but we haven't really talked about him. Got it. Sean Monaghan. Okay. Why? He could bring in a pretty penny. They already have... It's clear it's Goudreau's team, Sam Bennett's of the future. Monaghan's kind of that in-between guy. And they would have to pay him this season. Other teams, yep, have to pay him this season. Other teams would covet a guy like that. I don't want to start the rumor mill again because they released a press release, Tampa, saying, uh, nope, we're not trading Stamkos, we're holding on to him. But could you not see Sean Monaghan like a key piece in a Stamkos <sighs> to Calgary? I'm not trying to be biased. I'm just saying I ran the numbers. They can totally afford him. Like, they legit. could, yeah. And you know what? It'd be like Monaghan, probably a uh, Chris Russell or TJ Brody. I'd pick TJ. Or can I counter that Go. with they don't get Stamkos. But Monaghan is a key piece to get either Vasilevsky, Guzlevskis, or Bishop, so they have a number one goaltender. Mama. You know what I want to see? But I here's the other thing as go. well, is what is one of the biggest strengths that the Cal- Calgary Flames have right now? De- defensive depth. Everyone wants that. And what that's does my guy. Want? Okay, that's your that's guy? That's mine because I will go forever. Go. Hammers led home. Damn it. That was the other guy. I was going to say one of the two. And I know that D he has actually Anaheim. been... Speculated, but it's because they literally can't afford Hampus Lindholm, Sammy Vatten, and uh, they're going to combust at the end of the season. Like they just don't. They won't have money. They won't. They physically the Kessel won't. contract hasn't even kicked in. What? That goddamn Kessel contract hasn't yeah. even kicked in yet. I know. And they got Biaxa. Uh, like they just. What they, are they doing? They fucked up. We they talked about up. so many times, and that they dropped actually, the ball. Another goalie that could be available as well is Frederick Anderson. Because what do they do with John Gibson? What do they do with Anderson? They've got two good young goalies. Pretty sold on Gibson, I think. I think they are too. So then you've got a guy in Frederick Anderson. Where are you going to put him? Who wants to get him? Who wants to take that contract? Or who wants to pay him? Because he has playoff experience already. This is insane. I hope something big happens for next podcast. Can something blow up? But no, like, my long shot pick, Hampus Lindholm, your long shot pick is Sean Monaghan. To where for Hampus? I could see Hampus going to Edmonton. Nice. In a move for, you know, nail Yakubov in the second or something like that. Like, they're going to get a depth scoring forward. Because they already have their go-to guys. Mm-hmm. And I think that Hampus Lindholm would be a good complement to what they're already trying to do with Darnell Nurse. Have an offensive defenseman in what Hampus Lindholm can do. But he also plays that two-way style quite well. And Hampus Lindholm is Swedish, so we all know about complementary Swedish defensemen. Yeah, and then Tobias Enstrom can go there, and then we're, we're fine. Then they've got their D... In Edmonton, and everyone can be happy. True. Okay. So, uh, thanks for listening again. Um, remember to push it for PRV. That's it, eh? No. Push it for PRV? Um, that's what I'm doing. Push okay. it for PRV. It's okay. Do you have Lose one for Lane. Beautiful. That's okay. Yeah. I like these. These are money ones. Um, I'm sticking with face down ass up for Austin. <laughs> it's, it's not leaving, so that's great. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't have anything else to say. All right. Well, check us out on all of the social not Tumblr. medias. Not Tumblr. But I will be posting Don't. a Tumblr link. Yeah, no, no, can, it's a fun post. game. I know it is a fun It game. takes a while, though. So it's like it took me like five minutes. But, <laughs> okay, dude, you have to factor in stuff that's like longer than two minutes on YouTube. I have to think about. So I'm, sh- I'm shocked. <laughs> Are you that bad with YouTube? Oh, yeah. See, my YouTube, I like to find something that's like... Actually, no, I, I'm, that's I'm the typical like, YouTube watcher where I, I'm like, okay, I'm either going to dedicate myself... 
anything anything less than four minutes or anything more than twelve minutes. Yeah, like That's the people the who I, I subscribe to, I stick to it. Yeah, but like nonetheless, subscribe to us on YouTube. Yeah, uh, iTunes, Podomatic, yeah, yeah. any Android wherever, stuff. Wherever wherever you get your uh, wherever you listen to your podcast, we're there. And if we're not, let us know because we'll murder the people that did not allow us there. Death, betrayal, mm-hmm. revenge. And Ivan Provorov, if you're listening to this, I touch your stick. I give you all the good luck. Ha, 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 ha.